Julian Ovenden, absolute and raw talent in the shape of a man, has had a 20-year-long career to vouch for his versatility. Time and again, he has managed to prove his worth to the world of musicals, films, and all things wonderful by taking on roles which challenge him as a performer and mesmerize us as the audience. We're here today to see what he has to say about some of his most famous roles. Maybe you've heard of one or two of these? Does Bridgerton ring a bell? How about Downton Abbey or The Lost Girls? Let's get right into it. First up, Ovenden and the Lost Girls. According to Ovenden himself, growing up in England, almost every child has a connection with the Peter Pan story. But there's another deeper connection that the actor shares with Peter Pan. Apparently, Harvey Weinstein, whom he referred to as the ogre, although why insult ogres, am I right? Worked on a film, Finding Neverland, for quite a while before it was eventually completely rewritten for Broadway. In the play, Julian played both both Johnny Depp's and J.M. Barry's parts, and that experience has stayed with him over the years. Which is why, when writer and director Livia DePaulos presented him with the idea of the Lost Girls, he was intrigued by her unique take on it. Next, Ovenden originally didn't think they needed another Peter Pan film. It's true, at first Ovenden was skeptical to say the least, but once he actually realized that this film is all about bringing a different, a very female perspective of the story into the world, he was sold on the need to make it happen. He thought that the idea was original and the world needed to see it. What really spoke to him about the story was the many paradoxes that exist in the story. At the same time, being a parent in this day and age, he spoke about how scary it can be to raise children. He really resonated with his character Clayton Braverman, especially when he thinks about how, as a father, he too struggles with maintaining a balance between control and freedom in a world where we're surrounded by dangers of both real and virtual nature. Ovenden playing a role as complex as Clayton actually did it justice. The actor managed to come off as someone you'd have sympathy for, while maintaining that he's flawed at the same time, and now playing a character over a period of decades. Ovenden shared that during the filming process, he didn't spend hours on the makeup chair daily, and that playing the role of a man who grew older over the course of the film was more of a theatrical thing than a heavy prosthetics and makeup thing. The way it was done in the film, Julian apparently didn't think too much over it, since it all came down to adding and taking away wrinkles and adding gray hair to show his character growing older, since they weren't going for ultra-naturalism. He actually loved getting to grow old as a character, however brief the opportunity may have been. Next, acting opposite Livia. Not only was Livia DePaulos the director and writer for the film, she also played the grown-up version of Wendy. According to the 45-year-old actor, it was a really confusing experience for him, having to continuously remind himself of who was who. However, since the director had a very firm idea of what she wanted the film to turn out to be and where every part fit, that confusion was manageable, especially since Livia herself didn't have a lot of experience being an actor or a director. Ovenden really admired the fact that she took on both challenges and did it very well. Now, his take on playing both Wendy's father and Captain Hook, even though the stage version of the musical Peter Pan, the role of Wendy's father and Captain Hook were played by the same man, Ovenden was glad that Ian Glenn played Captain Hook in The Lost Girls. He shared that he did himself have the same thought, portraying something like that on screen would have been icky and messed up. He found the idea to be quite interesting and believed that it would have had a neat symmetry to it, but that the idea was never even discussed because not only would it have been strange having Clayton as Hook seducing his own child, Livia also had in mind to have the character of the father be pure, which makes sense since the director obviously wanted the film to depict a completely different picture, instead of making it into a psychological piece. Next, Julian Avenden and his experience as a part of Downton Abbey. Avenden joined the team of Downton Abbey during the fourth season of the show and stayed for the duration of the fifth season as well. People absolutely loved his performance, and his character, Charles Blake, really left an impact on fans. Avenden, however, didn't think that that was the case. He shared that when he joined the cast, since there were a lot of characters, the way his scenes were shot was bitty, meaning the experience he had, he only got to have a day here and there because the show had a lot going on at all times. Ovenden also shared that he actually felt a little frustrated when he had to leave in the next season, since the woman his character was supposed to be pursuing, Lady Mary, was taken off the market by actor Matthew Good's character, Henry Talbot. It's damn Matt, he joked. 
And now, joining the cast of an ongoing, extremely popular series. Julian had a lovely time being a part of Downton Abbey because the team of the show were all very welcoming and kind. He also felt that it was exhilarating to become a part of a show that already had an existing audience who was obsessed with the show. That's because he believes that the fact that there is so much content out there, half of the contributions of actors get buried and people never get to know about even the existence of good series, especially because of mass production of content by streaming services like Prime, Netflix, and Hulu. He joked that even finding a good show to watch requires having a large bank balance as well as a degree. Well, he's not wrong about that or about having to subscribe to so many of these services in order to locate content. So getting to be a part of one of the most watched series of all time gives performers a sense of satisfaction that not only are people going to see the content, but that their shots and scenes are in good hands. Next, Julian and Bridgerton, before it took over the entire universe. Since Julian talked about Netflix, it only made sense to mention the experience he had on being Henry Granville, an artist in London high society. Before we ever got to experience the mind-blowing phenomenon that is Bridgerton, Ovenden became a part of the first season of the show, where he not only painted a portrait of the then central characters Daphne Bridgerton and Lord Simon Bassett, he also helped the second oldest Bridgerton brother, Benedict, to see life from a different perspective and obviously obviously give in to his passion for painting. It was his character that helped pave the way for Benedict's character to grow and become daring enough to open up about what he wants in life in the second season of the show. And we're hoping that we will get to see more of Ovenden's character in season three, when hopefully we will get to see Benedict's life unfold as the main Bridgerton. Did Julian have any idea about how big the show was going to become? Well, of course he didn't. He shared that when he generally has that feeling, the project ends up being awful and nobody actually ends up watching it. Oof, those are some hard truth bombs over there, Julian. He did say that there were elements to Bridgerton that he thought were really clever, especially the very American take on a period drama. He loved the casting and believed that the series were very well edited and punchy when put together. At the same time, being absolutely candid, Ovenden shared that since the show was released during the lockdown, people had essentially been driving themselves crazy running out of things to watch. This aspect played really well for its views. And of course, it bode well for the show that it had the ability to mesmerize its viewers and take them to nice, colorful places where they didn't feel so miserable. All in all, Julian believes that the show did luck out, but that it was definitely very well done. The creators made it look like they spent a whole lot of money on it, and they really did. He loved being a part of a show as glossy as Bridgerton and had a whole lot of fun playing his character. Could Evenden become a part of the Broadway version of Smash, Julian has had a lot of experience in musical theater and was a part of the TV version of Smash the Musical. Of course, the question has to be asked, since there's going to be a stage version of Smash expected to come out in 2024, one possibility is that he really didn't know. On the other hand, maybe he was playing and didn't want to out himself yet. Either way, he shared that since he knows the composers Scott Whitman and Mark Shaman, he might just have to give them a call and ask them what's up. He did share that he's a part of South Pacific, another musical this summer, which is in London. Great news, but he really did want to return to New York and do a musical there. That's a wrap for this video. See you in the next one.